Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining me. Today, I'm going to be talking about a topic that, uh, you know, it's really interesting for me personally. It's more of a study, I guess, uh, and uh, I join you. Uh, I welcome you, I guess, to join me on this journey to kind of investigate um, the thermal assets in Saskatchewan, which, you know, it's a little bit of an uh, kind of opaque topic, like uh, not too many people talk about it because it's mainly like really small SACD assets. But uh, today I'm going to try to learn more about that, those and share share some knowledge with the community, I guess. So here in the map, as you can see, we have British Columbia to the west, we have Alberta, and we have Saskatchewan. So let's kind of zoom into that area of North Battleford, I guess. And there's this city, I guess there's a McDonald's Gold Eagle Casino in North Battleford. They have a good friend that was born there. So it's kind of cool to see that there's, I guess, some kind of river here. But if we go a little bit more kind of to the northwest side, we see a city, or it's not a city, I guess it's called a hamlet now. Uh, it's called Vaughan. So Vaughan is a former village, apparently, and now it's a hamlet, and it's in the Canadian province of Saskatchewan, as you can see here. It was dissolved as a village in 2004, uh, and its population counted as part of the kind of rural, I guess, uh, municipality of Turtle River. Uh, which is interesting to know. And it's about 50 kilo, 52 kilometers away from uh, north um, North Paddleford. So it kind of gives you a little perspective of the distances here. I guess there is a lake here. It's called Jackfish. Looks uh, looks kind of intriguing. Let's let's kind of jump there and see what that's all about. Oh, oh and landed in some kind of bush. Maybe we can go there and see maybe that body of water. No, <laughs> I guess it's maybe behind the trees or something. I don't know. But um, okay, let's try again. Let's try again. Let, maybe there's like some kind of beach here. Okay, let's see. Okay, there's some kind of something going on there. Oh, and it's mainly road, so it's hard hard to see the. Oh, I guess it's like there behind the houses. Yeah, and then I see some boats here, which is kind of cool. Well, anyway, so there's this jackfish uh, lake here. I guess people, some people leave it there. There's like some kind of, uh, you know, days beach there. I don't know, lake view looks 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 awesome. But that's not kind of the goal for this. So <clears throat> let's kind of focus on Vaughn a little bit here area. And so I'm, what I'm really really interested in is that next to Vaughn, there's a uh, there's an interesting kind of body of water here. There's some kind of lake. Okay, let's land there. See what what that's all about. So Oh, yeah, looks looks nice and blue. So no, no tailing ponds, you know, so not, nothing too alarming. So that's good. And um, yeah, so we have basically two thermal assets. So the one asset we're going to talk about is called Husky Von Thermal Asset. And uh, we can see kind of the CPF here and the various pads that connected through the pipe. As you can see here, the steam pipe and the emulsion pipe leading to the pads. So that's the first one. It's called Husky Von Thermal Asset. And now I guess because of the Husky merging with Synovus, it's a Synovus asset. And those are like, like I said, they're not well-known assets like in the community. So the idea here is kind of to investigate what it's about, but it's about 6,000 to like 7,000 barrels a day. And adjacent to it, there is a Serafina Energy Edom Thermal Asset. So you can see the plant here, I guess. Yeah, that's the plant and the pads, which are close by, which is nice. Close proximity. Actually, it's quite nice. Like if people live in Vaughan, in, in that, in that like, uh, I guess it's called a hamlet. If people live there and work in those sites, that, that could be like a win-win situation, I guess. But um, we're going to be investigating a little bit more of that and kind of better understand that area. So... Um, so let's kind of, I don't know, let, let's let line the guy and see what, what else can we see from that little, yeah, I guess it's just water there. Not much going on. I want to land closer maybe to to kind of the facilities. Maybe we can see, maybe we can see kind of closer, closer look to, like, oh, here, maybe Serafina next to the road, see what that looks like. And uh, next to the pad. Oh, yeah, something going on there. So we can see those, I guess those are the, the pad and far, far away there's, I guess, another one right there. But nothing nothing around us, so that has to be it. 
some kind of some kind of weird kind of blocks or something like cement blocks. I don't know. Oh, there's some kind of weird object, carpet maybe. I don't know. But um, yeah, so that has to be the pad. And if we go a little bit further, let's drop him maybe, maybe kind of further in here, closer to the plant. Maybe we can see something. Yeah, it's very very rural, right? Like. Yeah, we get so maybe that's the CPF central process facility they have. Well, anyway, let's let's talk about this asset a little bit more. So we have central process facility. Obviously, if we kind of follow the if we follow the pipe uh, that leads the steam and the emulsion back to the uh, to the central process facility, we see the pads here. So really good look of the pads. There's some, I guess, some injectors, some producers here. Yeah, look, looks good. And then there's some adjacent ones right here. The, this proximity is actually really nice because uh, I guess you can maintain a better steam quality if you have if the steam doesn't have to travel that long. So which is which is super cool. So I don't know. I can count maybe one, two, three pads or so. Maybe there's more than a missing, but it could be this that this map is outdated. But let's kind of uh, you know cover what this asset is and kind of what exactly is going on there. So this asset, the Serafina, um, sorry, the Strathcona asset, right? It, it was acquired by Strathcona. It looks like in August, this asset produced 7,325 barrels per day. Now, what I do, I just extract this from the public domain uh, from uh, kind of Saskatchewan data repository. And then I do some advanced calculations. So I have like, I programmed the data analytics model that you know, extract, puts this data and um, calculate some cool parameters. But I don't know if like there is some kind of ex experimental status on, on some wells that they don't share. So whatever is shared with the government, I'm trying to calculate and kind of see the progress. I guess historically, uh, Strathcona, if I look at the Saskatchewan kind of database here that they have uh, for Strathcona Edom. Yeah, so Strathcona Edom, they produced about uh, yeah 7.7, 7, 8, 6.7, 6.5 earlier, like later last year. So it kind of fluctuated between 6.5 to, I, I guess, to 8,000 barrels a day. So in August, it looks like it's about 7,300 barrels a day, 7.325. And the previous month production was 6,577 which is month over month uplift by about 11%. But then again, it's a small, relatively kind of small increase in actual barrels because it's like 6,500 to 7,300. But it seems like they're kind of producing in that range. And um, and if we kind of zoom in on those on the SPED and talk a little bit more, I guess, specifically to what uh, what the overall number of producing wells is if if you look at all the it seems like it's about 17 and the average well produces about 430 barrels a day and uh, the best well out of those wells that uh, we see kind of between i guess those pads that they have here and uh next to the cpf i guess uh, the best well produces about Let's see, produce about 880 barrels a day. So the average is 430. And the best well is about 880. The number of wells above the average uh, of that 430 that I mentioned is about nine and below is about eight. So it's kind of a good balance between the well pairs because it seems like they have about 17 producers. So, um, so some, you know, doing below, some above, which is great. And the top nine wells produce about 81% of the overall uh overall production at this asset. So Strathcona resources Edom like the asset. And the top five wells, it seems like they produce about 50% of the production. And it kind of makes sense if the average is 880, that's kind of what you get. It seems like the average injected steam rate is about 21,495. And they have about, it seems like they have about 12 SIGD injectors based on my calculations here. Again, kind of don't rely on that. There could be it changed. It could be a mistake in the way I calculate, but I'm just trying to kind of learn about this asset and uh, do my best. Please comment if you think that anything I share is not representative, but it seems like 
the monthly SOR right now, so steam to a ratio based on those numbers is about 2.9. And historically, if I look on the, the database uh, for Strathcona, it's about 2.8, 2.9, which, which is kind of what I'm getting as well. So that's good. The water produced uh, to steam ratio is about 1.5, where ideally you want it to be one. But again, you know, it's kind of a Saskatchewan asset I'm not really familiar with. So maybe there is some nuance with the kind of water there that maybe the, the way they operate those wells kind of makes sense to them. And it seems like the water cut is about 82% for this asset. And uh, since the previously reported data, the production increased in about 60% of the oil producing wells, which is amazing. And uh, it seems like the change in the number of oil producing wells was plus two. So maybe some wells were online and some wells came in after some redrills maybe. So but that's kind of what we get right now. It's about 7,300 barrels a day for this asset. And that steam that I mentioned is coming from the plant and the steaming kind of the, the chambers and, and then you get the oil production that's coming. So let's kind of zoom in now on Husky Von Thermal Asset here we get and again like you know this is clean water i don't know sometimes when you go on bnn bloomberg and such or any other news and you see them basically talking about oil sense and then they show like some kind of picture of some tailing ponds or something but clearly that's not what these are oil sense as well but that's not what we see here so what i would highly encourage them maybe to use pictures from this type of assets that you know they look nice clean you know, you could always kind of restore when you um, when you kind of uh, conclude uh, extracting oil from those uh, pads. You basically, can plant trees just like here, right? And they get back to to its previous state. So good for sustainability, I guess. But if I kind of follow the central process facility here, so it looks looks nice. And then we we see the pipe. It seems like the the pipe here goes. There's a road, and it kind of goes under dirt. So I noticed that. So then if we kind of follow it and it leads us to this pad here. So there's some kind of pad there. And I, I guess that's the pad we could see maybe from the road here. Let's see if we can see it again. It's probably kind of the same. Uh, yeah, right, right there. Yeah, far, far away. You can see some kind of heavy machinery. But it's beautiful, beautiful kind of body, bodies of water there. And there's some truck driving between those. So it looks nice and clean, yeah, that's good. But um, but yeah, let's kind of talk a little bit more about that. So as we said, the the asset that's uh, the Strathcona asset, the Edom Strathcona asset that's adjacent to the Vaughn asset is basically producing about 7,300 barrels a day. It seems like the the Sonovas, I guess, um, Husky Vaughn asset, right? So now. Now, I guess, you know, it's called uh, Husky Vaughn, but it's a Sonovas Energy Saskatchewan Sonovas Vaughn SACD asset. It seems like the production there is about 6,000 barrels a day, uh, 6,061 barrels a day, and the previous month it was 6,064. So let me confirm with the, um, just to make sure that, yeah, so it's it was 5.5 thousand or so in April, and uh, it was about 6,000 barrels a day in December. And right now it's at the same rate, which makes sense. So about 6,064 previous month. So in July and in August, uh, it's 6,061 barrels a day. So production is essentially flat. They have uh, between those, um, what what you see here, those producers in those pads that you can see, it's about uh, 21 of them in overall uh, on this asset. So there is about 21 producing wells and they produce about 288 barrels a day. And seems like the best well is producing 751 barrels a day. And the number that wells above the producing oil average uh, that I mentioned of 288 barrels a day is about eight. And the numbers of the wells that produce below is about 13. So again, we see a very good balance between the wells that operate below the average of 288 barrels per day and above. So that's great. The top eight wells produce 77% of the overall production rate. And the top five wells produce 54%. I, th I think we saw very similar numbers or the Strathcona asset. The injected steam rate here is 21,050. So 21,050, just as a reminder, um, the average steam rate for for Strathcona EDAM asset was 21,500. So we start seeing 
very kind of similar Steam capabilities between the two assets, right? So those two assets, if we look at their CPF, so this CPF right here and this CPF right there, uh, it seems like they have very similar capability when it comes to generating Steam. And I think it's really important to be mindful of that because it, you know the oil drainage is really a function of kind of the ability of the Steam to heat transfer and uh, dilute the, the, the bitumen to be drained by gravity, right? And so that's that's really interesting for me personally to know that they have similar kind of steam injection rate. I think um, Strathcona injecting about 500 barrels a day more here. That's kind of what it looks like to me. They inject 21,495, while um, uh, Synovus as one well asset, they're injecting about 21,050. So, their SOR here, it seems like it's about 3.47 for the that small Vaughn asset. And um, it seems like the ratio for water, the um, water produced to steam ratio in, in uh, the Vaughn asset is about 1.23. So which is, I think it's a little bit better than Strathcona's numbers. And uh, the water cut is about 81. So the water cut for for the Vaughn asset was, sorry, for the Edom asset was 82. So 81, 82. So makes sense, right? Similar geology, they're next door to each other. So uh, that's kind of very logical. And the change in oil producing wells from last month was minus one. So maybe the well is being repaired or something like this. So that makes sense. So hopefully, you know, um, we were able to kind of understand a little bit better about those assets. So we have Husky Von Thermal asset here that belongs to Synovus now through the merger between Husky and Synovus. And we have the Serafina Energy Edom Thermal assets that now belongs to uh, Strathcona. Actually, you know, I really learned a lot from um, the acquisition of Serafina by uh, Waters, obviously, that holds a uh, majority stake in, <clears throat> in uh, Strathcona that I learned a lot about kind of like how they uh, transact the deals and uh, the pipes and acquisition. So it's been really fascinating to watch kind of and seeing those assets, right? Now, like we're seeing them, uh, we, we always hear about them, but people don't really see them. Um, and I think this type of kind of videos that I'm making, it's it, they're, they're, I think they're almost impossible for a typical person to kind of know about or find or see the production or better understand those assets. So I'm just trying to do my best, best due diligence to better understand those assets to myself, talk about this, uh, you know, share with the community. And, uh, you know, it seems like they're doing a good job. So just absolutely kind of random place in Vaughn that is not even a village. It's kind of like a, a hamlet, I guess, you know, and uh, yeah, uh, no tailing ponds. So debunking that for sure. And uh, I think we should see more, more pictures like this, uh, you know, on uh, when people talk about... Uh, Canadian oil sands and such in situ recovery, which is uh, great. So wonderful job. And uh, thank you so much for kind of um, sharing your data with the regulators, I guess, that provide for people like me opportunity to learn and better understand those assets and to share this information with uh, with people. So thank you so much. All the best.